the name of Jesus. Our coming will not be in vain now. Our coming will not be in vain tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will help us tonight. Lord, you will help us tonight, O God. Lord, you will help us to God tonight. Our coming to this earth will not be in vain now. In the name of Jesus. I wanted to pray that I will not be overrated. Name of Jesus. Amen. I speak in parable. Okay. I do what I speak in parables. I speak in parables. Um, let me quickly share with you wonderful sons and daughters of the kingdom, brothers and sisters. You see, every drop of the blessings that come from the word of God and that come from the place of prayer that God deposits in your life is something that is meant for your tomorrow. Something meant for your tomorrow. I pray you will not waste it. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, many of us, we like finished products. We like finished products. We like when things are already made. Already made. But unfortunately, there's nobody, not a single soul in the kingdom that come ready made. Hmm. You see, it amazes me that somebody like me has been up from three, finish, we finish TOF in the morning, been to work, back, yet to sit down to really, and we're here, and even the person that's going to lead us, I know you might have been busy, or even came after six thirty. You see, Bible says, it's all this little, little faithfulness. All this little, little faithfulness. So if you are not faithful in little things, who then will give you your own true riches? Wow. You see, my job is to make sure that you are trained correctly. Amen. Amen. If you allow yourself to. Because guess what? You'll find out that the future is not for lazy people. <laughs> Because sometimes when I pray for young people, for singles, I ask myself, if you are single, will you marry that person you are praying for? So will you answer your own prayer? Because what many of us are bringing to the table is not a future material. I'm sorry for speaking to you like, you know, I know you are my fathers and my mothers. <laughs> uh, what many of you, you are taking a butter knife to the war front. That's what many of you, your preparation is the preparation of a butter knife. But I pray that you know, miss, that you will not wish you have taken every opportunity you have in life. Seriously. <laughs> I want you to pray that you not be overrated. You know what does it mean to be overrated? That means that, that means that the expectation that nobody will look at you and say, ah, oh, okay, ah, ah, bro has come, sister has come, ah, he can get this done. And to now find out that you don't measure up to expectation. They will not say, oh, she was at youth conference. 
she was at um uh, consecration camp oh oh she was on gps oh ah, oh yeah oh, oh my god in fact she's been attending the uh, uf oh yes with all of those investment of grace ah that one now original <laughs> i don't need to find out empty shell Oh, that would not be your own story in the name oh, of amen. Amen. I'm not saying GPS is what makes a giant. That's not what I'm saying, no. That's not what I'm saying, no. At least you are here. It's a man of the you will hear. Maybe things that you will need to help somebody to be better in their journey. You amen. see, greatness is a busy place. Greatness is a busy place. Many of us are praying for greatness, but our actions is already a report card. That we are not preparing for it. Lord, may I not be overrated. When on the day of my appearing, Lord, may I show up prepared in the name of Jesus. On the day of my, when, you see, they say success comes when preparation meets opportunity. Lord, on the days that opportunity will come for me to be who you have called me to be, that on the day the answer to my prayers will show up. Lord, may I be prepared for it. May I not be an overrated person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayers in the name of Jesus. Prayers in the name of Jesus. That Lord, on the day you will answer my prayers, uh, may I be ready. May I be ready. May I be prepared uh, for the answered prayers. Uh, may the results of that may the answer to my prayers uh, not be my downfall. May the answer to my prayer not be my downfall. May the answer to my prayers uh, not be my downfall. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. Be ready. Help me to 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 be ready. In the name of the Lord, Lord, you will help me. Lord, you will help me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I'm going to give you three popular stories that you know, so that you understand that everything I say to you has come bearing scriptures with me. Because sometimes, you see, when I see some people. <laughs> I laugh. I don't know why I laugh. I laugh because you have very beautiful clothes. But you are not really, really prepared for a beautiful future. Oh, Jesus. Listen to me. Tomorrow is not... Listen, if you want a, a tomorrow in Christ, in Christ, I'm not saying in this world. In this world, your journey, oh my God, beautiful. But if, if tomorrow in Christ... Do you know that a young man in Canada, a young boy, how many of you heard the story of a young boy in Canada that was handcuffed and arrested for saying that there's a difference between men and women? Jesus. How many of you heard the story? This hmm. is fresh. Just happened that there's a difference between men and women. He was arrested, a Catholic student. We are Pentecostal students. Can we can we stand? Can we stand up to defend our faith? But all of this we stem from how what we are feeding our soul. See, there are people, certain people you think they have too much time now, but the day you will need them, I pray they may they be available for you. <laughs> you see. Joseph, Joseph, all the father said to him was, son, go and check on your brothers and bring, just be sure that they are fine and the flock is fine. You understand? He never prepared to go to Egypt. I hope you know that. He was not prepared to go to Egypt. He entered Egypt naked. He left home as the beloved of his father. He entered Egypt naked as a slave against his will. An opportunity showed, the so-called thing that we call opportunity, showed up for him in the house of Potiphar, coming from the madame of the house. 
You see, even though he entered Egypt naked, physically, but spiritually, he was clothed with the fear of the Lord. Can somebody read Genesis? For us? And, give us this is good and we are and we are we are going to read Genesis um I believe 39 verse 9. Genesis 39 verse 9. That's where it should be. Anybody can read 39 verse 9 and let's see what is it there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is none greater in this house than I. Uh -huh. Neither had he kept back anything from me, but thee. Because thou art his wife, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You see, guess what? He paid dearly for saying no to sin. But guess what? By the time of his appearing, when the glory showed up, all of that journey was 13 That's years. 13 it years. Great. It took him 13 years. But wow. after that 13 years, Oh, that was it. To do tonight too. You know what I, it takes. I got... You know what it takes to be a youth in that that and uh, you know based on our classification, thirteen years old. He was not. He was not prepared to go to Egypt. But guess what? Every what was inside of him prepared him for Egypt and beyond Egypt. He became a prime minister in a foreign land. That's one. David was a young man. So he was 17 years old. Joseph was 17 years old when he went on that journey. 17. Many of us here are more than 17 years old. David, almost the same. He was to go and see, to take food to his brothers and check on them and the captain. They've been on the battlefront for 40 days. And 40 night. He didn't go there with a the sword. He was not prepared to go and fight the battle. He was just to, to check. He was to bring words back to his father. How the brothers are fearing at the war front. But guess what? He came back with the head of Goliath. Because the preparation he has had in Christ, in God, got him ready when the opportunity came for the head of Goliath to roll. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was only 12 years old. 12. When the parents left him for 30 days before they found him in the temple. 30 days. And a 12 year old boy was not worried about food was there. Do you ever ask yourself, what was he eating? Where was he sleeping? Three days. No wonder. 18 years after, when the devil showed up and said it is written, he was too prepared to be confused. Greatness is not for lazy people. So, listen, no one is ever going to beg you to come to anything. We're going to encourage you as much as we can. But I beg you in the name of the Lord. Don't miss anything no, that is meant for you. Because guess what? Whatever you miss. Now, in the, in the future, the gap will be there. And may you not be one of those people who will get to the future and find out you are not ready for it. The ten virgins, five, decided to carry extra lamb, extra oil. But five chose not to. They think they have everything fine. The bridegroom delayed, and when the time showed, when the time came for them to meet the bridegroom, five were ready, five were not ready. And the five that were not ready begged the ones that were ready, and they said, sorry. They had the money to have bought extra oil. They know where to, to buy. They have everything it takes to be ready. But they chose not to. Listen. 
what we are doing, if you think it's because some people have it's too much time in their hands, don't worry. <laughs> some people said that to us when we were small. When we were younger, people told us this, to be serious. And I know part of the people that were in those fellowships together. Today, they are beating their wives. Some of them are drinking beer now. Today, many years after, I pray that the future ahead of you will not be a failed future in the name of Jesus Christ. So, one more prayer point and then our speaker for today, our facilitator for today, we take it over from here. One more prayer point. I want you to pray that God, everything you have for me in, through this ministry, this youth and young adult ministry, everything you have for me, Lord, may I not miss any. May, may familiarity not make me miss any of them. Lord, may I not in any way miss out in divine agenda. Because guess what? If any one of us miss out, only one person will be responsible for it. You, yourself. I want you to lift up your voice to God and pray. That Father, and pray for other youth. Pray for other youth and young adults. That Father, I pray for myself and I pray for my brothers. I pray for my sisters. That Lord, everything you have in store for us, in preparation for the future you have for us, may we not miss any of them. So that our tomorrow will not be a failed future. Pray us in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unmute yourself if you can. Yes, if not, don't worry about Father, it. But just make sure you are praying. Father, that Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for myself. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for this youth. I pray for this young adult. That in the name of Jesus, the future that you have for us, God, will not be a future. Don't miss what you are doing. Be there for the future. Don't miss it. We will not miss it. I will not miss it. I will not miss it. I will not miss it. Precious Father, yes, Lord. Tonight we say, Lord, you will help us. Amen. Amen. Daddy, I pray that none of these people here, none, not a not one person will have their time wasted tonight in the name of Amen. God. Amen. I spoke to them based on what I know is the result of the actions of many. But I pray, Father, in your mercy, you will help every one of us that we will not miss what is meant for the future that you have for us in the name of Jesus Christ. That, Father, we will not, out of familiarity, out of laziness, out of deception of the devil, prepare ourselves for a failed future in the name of Jesus Christ. You will help us. You will strengthen us. So that, Lord, no matter where and how, everything you have for us will not miss any in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every single one that you have brought here tonight, let us leave this place blessed and let our lives bring glory to you. Amen. And let our testimony be such that we forever be referenced for good and not for shame. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, Thank you, Lord. We're going to use tonight. We pray that, Father, you will use them powerfully. Amen. What is said and done, let us all leave this place having been blessed. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Brother Peter. I know Shijay. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Oh. Let me turn on my video, right? Should I turn on my video, sir? Absolutely. Okay. You can do anything you want to do. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. 
Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I thank um Pastor David for this opportunity and everyone for coming here today. Uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. And as Amen. as a, I pray that everyone as here will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So um we prayed already. Let's just get into our topic of today. So um my topic that I'm sharing with us today is what are you feeling in your soul? It's more like, uh, like a question to call attention, like to put in our spirit, like what are we doing? What are we feeling in our soul? To call us back. Maybe we're already astray, maybe we're already lost in what we're doing. So um, before we begin, let us familiarize ourselves with what we know about our soul. What do you know about the like, human soul? And we don't have to think about it deep, just like say anything that comes to mind. Anyone that wants to talk in just on yourself. What do we know about a human soul? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our, our human soul, or our living soul, is what we use to magnify the Lord. Because we have songs, they said, let every living soul praise the Lord. So, And the Bible said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and not forget his benefits. So it's with our souls that we use to praise God. And it's the, the soul that God helps us to remember not to forget the things that he has done for us. So that's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, man. So that's, that's one thing. That's a major thing in what our soul is for. So is there anyone else before I proceed? Our soul is um is like our thoughts and our emotions, so that's part of it. Thank you. So um the soul is one of the human kind three distinct components. As we all know, the human being like the human body is tripartite. We have a soul, our spirit, and our body, which is our flesh. So the spirit is always pointed towards and exists ex exclusively for God. But our soul can be self-centered. The soul is the medium of interaction between your spirit and your body. So when um, you receive, when the Lord wants to communicate with you, send it to your spirit, and your soul communicates to your body. And if the body are rejected, that's where the conflict between the spirit and the flesh starts. But that's not what we're going to today. The flesh I and mean, the soul is what we're focusing on. So as we move on, we already know what our soul is and what like what our soul is useful. Now let's let's talk about how what you feed your soul affects your way of life. So we, we're still moving in what are we feeding our soul, but let us know like how what are feeding our soul affects the way of life. There are a lot of things we overlook as Christians, things that are cogent that we do on a daily this day or the daily basis, type of songs or artists we listen to type of podcast we listen to, type of friendship we keep, movies we watch, and so on, or so on. They are so crucial like, to pay attention to. All these things, they matter to us. So they matter, they matter a lot to our soul because that's what we engage ourselves in. That's what we deep ourselves in. So um, concerning songs, let us look at um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. What a producer. What Anyone can read for us Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 and 20. And if we have anyone that is very fast that can type scriptures, uh, as in, you know, when the scripture is called, you can just put it in the chat so that people know exactly what. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 from verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we, we heard it very well in here. Music is, first of all, made primarily to God. Like music is 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 not necessary, but like secondary to ourselves. But music is made primarily to God. Music should communicate and express 
a sense of awe and wonder in the presence of God. It should lead our thoughts toward God. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says, um, for as a man thinks in his soul, so is he. When when your when the type of music you listen to means when it connects your thoughts to God, you won't have to be thinking about something else that either depletes your soul or that releases the wrong way. So music it should it should it should communicate your heart, it should lead your thoughts towards God rather than towards ourselves or something. Like like some other songs we listen to um as youth or even young adults, um like um rappers like in their songs, they talk about how they committed murders and everything. They're talking about how many people they like they they say they clogged or something. They, they use some kind of words in it. So that's not the kind of songs that we should be like engrossing it ourselves in. That does not that's not it does not adding anything to us. Or um the like our our rapper spent his night in a club or something. That's the kind of that's what the wordings of of the song says. Like something where they were, where they were, and what they've been doing. Oh, that's 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 singing to the devil, singing to the devil, and their deal they made or something like that. But music is to worship God. It's made only to worship God, to to connect ourselves to God. May the Lord help us. Um, the type of friends you keep. Um, let's see how the Bible describes the company you should keep. The kind of friends you should have. Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 4 and verse 6. Daniel 1, 3 to 4 and 6. Anyone who can read? Okay, I'll read. Um, then the king instructed Asphinas, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish or good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. Now verse six. Now from among those of the sons of Judah with Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. So basically the Bible described the kind of friends that you should keep, the kinds of friends you should have. Now, those are the kind of friends Daniel has. And the Bible described them as with no blemish, possessing knowledge and quick to understanding. Those are the kind of friends that the, the, the kind of friends that like understand the words of God and Communicate with in, in 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 the word of God. Over chapter twenty seven, the seventeen says, "So as a man, yeah, um, the Bible it says, iron sharpened iron. Yes, iron sharpened iron. So as a man, as a man sharpened the countenance of his room. So the, the friends you keep, if you are an iron and your friend is also an iron, you sharpen each other. When you when you come together with each other, you sharpen each other." If a wood and your friends and I, you are you are you are like hurting each other. Your relationship is is not is hurting each is hurting each other because the iron will be um it will be getting daunted like the mouth will be getting daunted and the wood will be also getting like I don't know cut into pieces. So iron sharpness iron. Even if you are wood and your friend is a wood, wood together starts fire. When they rub each other, they start fire. But we should, we should, iron, iron should sharpen iron. The, friend, the kinds of friends you keep, they should, they should like help you grow together in the Christ. You should keep friends to study the Bible together to pray. Like I, we say in Daniel chapter 17, verse 18, and maybe we can read it real quick. If you haven't closed that, Daniel, you can just move to chapter 17. No, Daniel chapter 2, rather, verse 17 and 18. Is anyone? Then Daniel returned. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. 
Thank you. So what we see in it, Daniel called his friends to ask for the mercy of God. The kind of friends you call when you are fighting a spiritual battle that you can't go on by yourself. The kind of friends you call when you discover something in the Bible and you want to share it. Daniel called his friends to seek the mercy of God, to pray together. Those are the kind of friends you should keep. Those, those kind of friends help us to grow, helps our soul. We should, we should keep friends that talk about the things of spirit and not the things of flesh. We should not be keeping friends that all they do is talk about, all we do is talk about money in our conversation, talk about um, like enjoying your life and stuff like that. Even if you want to talk about money, talk about how your career in, in the major you, in what you major in, how your career leads to making you financially stable. That's that lies going through the right way. It's not talking about money like just to have money, fast, fast money, quick money. No. Friends that talk things of it, that, that that discuss the things of the spirit and not of the flesh. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Um, um, I think it says, let me check if I put something. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He who works with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. If you work with a wise man, you will be wise. If you work with a fool, you will be a fool. You will be destroyed. Because there's no advantage. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26 also says, um, the righteous should choose his friend carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. Choose the kind of friend you have carefully. Choose, don't, don't, don't just jump into any relationship that will, that, will, that will endanger your soul, that will poison your soul. Keep friends that that will help you go spiritually. May the Lord help us. Amen. So, moving on, type of movies you watch. What is the message of the movie that you are watching? I know it might be difficult for you to, not not to watch like secular movies, some um, um, MCU movies, Marvel movies, superhero movies. Because would you rather feed your soul a movie that endangers it, a movie that poisons your soul, or the one that enriches it? It's your choice. You talk to you. You have to decide what you want. Some Hollywood, Hollywood movies and, and or some other movies that I watch, they'll be showing scenes of, of like a man kissing a man. I watched a movie of recent, um, like a tall uh, love and thunder. The movie was not like that before. It was like a, let's say, a, a movie that has series behind it. And what's the point of showing this, this scene of like a man kissing a man or like it doesn't even go in with what, what is happening in the in the environment of the scene, like they just show the scene like that. What are they? What are what are they trying to promote? What are they trying to to preach to you? Or they are already they are really enforcing the LGBTQ stuff. They are like in movies. Do we pay attention to them? We can see them vividly clear. They, they, they keep enforcing it like to to what, what are they doing it for? The, to like take us off the tracks. When I was um, screaming through Netflix one day to like check a series of movies to watch or something, I saw a movie named Lucifer. Like it's a series called Lucifer. Lucifer, it was it's named after the devil. I didn't bother to watch it like because it was not. It didn't even feel right like to watch it because what 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 was that kind of movie? Would preach? What, what was it gonna like preach to me? Like maybe the devil is misunderstood. Maybe he's actually a good person or something. I didn't bother watching. I don't know. Maybe, might be preaching something like that. I don't know but what what it, what already like approaches you with is Lucifer like, doesn't doesn't click. So let us pay attention to the kind of movies you watch. Let us pay good attention. And if it doesn't preach anything to you, anything good to you, based on your belief or anything, just don't bother watching it. Feeding your soul, how feeding your soul can affect your way of life as a minister in church choir. Most of us. In, in one in one part or the other, we we are we are part of the of the church, the pillar of the church. So how do you minister or preach the gospel if you feed your soul with worldly music, podcasts that support worldly things? You want to come on the pulpit to preach, to preach. And what were you doing last night on Saturday? Uh-huh. We're, we're, we're listening to songs that are like that doesn't even preach anything. You you want to you, you acquire or what you listen to is Lulu is right. You're listening to Rihanna Beyonce. And you want to and you're and you're your gospel singer, your gospel minister. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't even sound right. 
let us let us let us listen to music like that 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 helps us. It's basically in the scripture we we read psalms, hymns that connect our souls that connect our hearts to God. Sometimes we notice we cause a lot. Like it's it's one of the major problem in in, in our teenage. See, we cause we cause a lot. Like we can't like we, even if you want to stop, you can. It's not easy like that. You just feel like you're you're in a conversation and you just blurted out the cause word. It's because of the kind of movies, the kind of songs you 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 watch. Like what are they, what was the what's the wording of the song? What's the wording? What's it like? What are they saying in the movie? What are they saying? What are they saying in the song? Even your conversation, like the previous conversation you've always been having. What what was it? What was it? What what like what's the basis of your conversation? What are you talking about? So if you want to like, if you want to stop all these like posting and everything, pay attention to your social media life, your, your watch, what you listen to, your, like what are the details? It's going to help you just pay attention to what you do. And the Lord help us. So why should you feel your soul with the writing? Why should we feel your soul with the writing? But before we go into that, how do you know if you feel your soul is wrong? We'll, we'll see yeah. that later. But let's, let's see. Why should you feed your soul with the right thing? Um, let's read Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 to 12. Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 to 12. Genesis 39, 7 to 12. Oh. And after a while, Asa's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the, into the house to attend his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She called him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out the house. Thank you. So what we read, we, all, we most of us know the story about all this incident. Most, Joseph ran out. Why should you feed your soul with the right thing? So word of the enemy. To word of the enemy. How do you word of the enemy if what you're feeding your soul is wrong? If Joseph hasn't like been someone that has integrity and something like that, like if, if he has not been enriching himself with like made the word of God, I don't know what he's been doing, but he basically has been doing the right thing that helps his soul. He wouldn't he wouldn't have run out like this. He wouldn't he wouldn't have run out. Even in this is in this age. You'll say uh, something that has, that you've been trying hard to get, like you've been trying hard to get it on me, and she just called you like that. You just fall for it. Well, Joseph ran out. He basically word of the enemy before the dead is so. You can't give out what you don't have. If you are feeding your soul with the wrong thing, and you are not you're not paying attention to what you're feeding your soul, you can't give out healing, prophecy, or even preach the gospel to unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Let's see Matthew chapter 17, 14 to 21. And someone else open Mark chapter 9, verse 17 to 29. So before we read these scriptures, it's basically like, a, um, I won't call it, it's not a coincidence because the Bible doesn't like make any coincidences. This is like a story that happens like the same thing. Jesus said the same words and it was like the same pattern. So firstly, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 to 21. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long? 
shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he healed and he was healed at the moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked him, why wouldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. No, verse 21. If okay. The last verse. Um, I read, uh, okay. I think I already read it. Nothing will be impossible for you. That's what it says. Um, like the verse 21 says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Okay. Yeah. I don't know my best. Maybe they cut it out of my Bible or something. Okay. So that's the okay. like major thing I, I want us to see there. Okay. That's the major. Now, um, Mark chapter 9, verse 17 to 21. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it sees him, it throw him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered them and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be? Shall I be with you? Bring him to me. Um, to twenty nine. To twenty nine. Yeah. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit confused him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, confused him greatly, and came out of him. And it became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciple asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Thank you, sir. thank you. Amen. So I know that's that's like a lot for us, but we can see the, the cogent thing I want us to, that I want to bring out is firstly, the boy was cried to the disciples, they were not able to do anything to to help both of them in both contexts. Now um they took him and the, the other one to Jesus and he said um a youth the youth the possessed boy and like the sick one, then after the disciples went to meet Jesus, that why couldn't they do it? Then he said, she said, firstly, they have to have faith and you can't go without prayer and fasting. That brings us back to like what I say is like, how do you ward off the enemy if you're feeding your soul with the wrong thing? How do you cast out demons? If, you see, if they will come to you first, they will come to you. And if you can't do anything, they will leave you, they will move on. And is that what you want to be in your report card as? It, it, like you, they, they came to you for healing and because they see you as someone that is very active in church and like speaking tongues and everything or you were, you were found wanting they, they went to they went to the disciples 
in 21. Like, that's that's what I wanted to move out in. That was when we read this. This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting, except by feeding your soul with the right thing. It's prayer, feeding your soul with, with fasting, spending time in the secret room. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 says, Gen- um, Generation awaits the. Um, okay, um, let me see. Let me, I don't want to put the wrong thing. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is watching you. Everyone around you, they, they, are, they are waiting for, um, okay, you go to church, you go to church, you go for choir practice, you go to youth meeting, and okay, you you go to, um, well, you come to church on Sundays, now let's see what you can produce, what, let's see what you can give up. The, 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 the generation waits earnestly they wait for the revealing of the son of God. So you want to you want to be found wanting when they come to you. So let, let us feed our soul with bread. We'll move on. Um to receive from God, to receive from God. Let's read First Corinthians chapter 3, 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter three. Yes. From, from verse one. And two, one and two. Okay. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as people who are still worldly, merely infants in Christ. I give you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. So, what is in this Bible verse? Bible verse is, it he, he came to them, like, to, to give them meat, but they can't, they can't, like, chew it with their baby teeth, baby tooth, because all, all they were being fed were milk and not solid food. That's basically what it's saying. He came to them to give to them, but they were not able to receive. You cannot receive anything tangible from God if you are if you are not well equipped. That is, if you are not if you are not feeding your soul with the right thing, if you are feeding your soul with the wrong thing or wrong things, if you are found wanting, just as the Bible verse we just read, like if you are found wanting, they were found wanting. They can't be treated as adults where when they were babies. God can give you a great revelation when you are not equipping yourself with prayer, with fasting, with His Word. You pray for gifts from God, but you are not in the right state of mind to receive those gifts. You cannot bear the gift of God or great power if you don't feed your soul with the right things of God. You cannot like you cannot you cannot like in the in the previous song we said you cannot like um um do healing or or prophesy or even preach the gospel if you if you are being found You cannot receive anything from God. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If you defy yourself, what cannot dwell in you can't use you. First Corinthians, that's what first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says. If you cannot, if you can if you defy yourself, God cannot dwell in you. If, if you are feeding your soul with the wrong thing, uh, if you are if you are poisoning your soul, God can't use you. Also, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 7. Those those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But our mind should be set on the things of the spirit and not of the flesh. Our soul should be set on the things of the spirit and not of the flesh. And let's pay attention to this. You cannot expect God to be the source of your peace when the world is your source of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. And when 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 all you when all you do outside is enjoy your life, and now you come to God, oh God, uh, come and help me. After you went, you went even spending time with him. You cannot, you cannot expect God to be the source of your peace when the world is the source of your satisfaction. May God, God help us. Amen. Amen. 
Also, to maintain the will of God for your life. That's why you should keep your soul with the right thing. There are more than 29 Bible verses where Jesus prayed in the Bible. You will see Jesus prayed when he left the disciples and went to go and pray. You may be wondering why Jesus was praying when he's God himself. Why, did, why does he need to pray? He prayed to maintain his life with God. He prayed, he prayed to make sure he was able to fulfill his purpose. He, he prayed to keep in connection with God. Even God himself is still praying. So what excuse do we have? You should keep praying. Let's let's read um Jude chapter one verse twenty to twenty one. Jude chapter one verse twenty to twenty one. Job chapter one. Jude Jude chapter one. Jude. Oh, sorry. Jude chapter one twenty two. From twenty. Yeah, twenty and twenty one. Okay. So just uh, 120, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, 21, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The latter the part where it says unto eternal life. The Bible didn't say stop praying, never stop praying. If you want to maintain the will of God for your life, never stop praying. Keep praying. You have to maintain the will of God for your life by feeding yourself with the right and feeding your soul with the right and with the word of God. They say, um, when when I went to the consecration retreat, I, I heard something like um, prophecy. The pro prophecy might be tricky sometimes. But um, I was even trying to argue, I was even trying to like, yeah, like why, why would prophecy that came from God himself be tricky? But the basic explanation is, even if it has been prophesied that you'd be a great person, that you would do great exploits for God, and the way you were living your life is waywardly poisoning your soul, you were not even getting ready for that prophecy to come true. You can't, you can't, you can't fulfill that prophecy. You can't fulfill that prophecy. You've been prophesied that you will be the president, you'll be you'll be a good person, but you didn't even study, you didn't even do anything in college, you didn't even like you had criminal records and everything. The, the, the prophecy can't come to pass. If you want to fulfill God's purpose for your life, you have to keep yourself, keep, keep your soul with the right thing. Pay attention to what you're feeding your soul, Pay attention to what you're feeding your soul. First Corinthians chapter um, 10 verse 12. First Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, He who thinks he stands should take it lest he fall. You've been prophesied to be a, a good person, but you've not been living well. Take it lest you fall. Lest you fall out of God's will. Lest you fall out of the purpose God has for your life. So continue. But I, well, like, continue what we're reading. Um, the last meeting we had in 2022, um, the last GPS meeting, I was able to get some notes from there. And um, Dickney is mentioned like when he was sick and it was like it was a spiritual work and everything, but he wasn't able to find, which was just the mercy of God that kept him. He, he basically mentioned it like he was, he, 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 didn't, he wasn't living very well that time. He wasn't equipping himself the word of God that time. But God God wants to show him that okay, if, if you if you know you want to you want to be able to fight this up sometimes when 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 they come, when the spiritual attack comes, you want to be able to ward it up, you want to be able to fight up the enemy. You have to feed your soul with the right thing. That's why he showed him mercy and kept him. And he was able to see now when he's been spending his time in the secret room and everything, the, the, the devil or his agents can't come here again. You have to feed your soul the right thing to word of the enemy. That's just a continuation of that. I'm just using those those people that we know. Because Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, but, um, um, we've been surrounded yet, we've been surrounded by great, by so great cloud of witnesses. So it was bringing it back from the world of faith, but we can still apply it to our lives. We've been surrounded by great cloud of witnesses. 
we don't have to go far. We have to, we can just look around ourselves. Those people that we look up to, our pastors and leaders in church, how are they living their life? Is it applicable to us? Sister Choma also mentioned when um, I think they were attacked in their school and she didn't even have, so she prayed. She went, when, when she was, when everyone was running out of Skeeter, she was in that, she was still in that room and she prayed and Holy Spirit himself like came in the form of him and of the young boy helped her out of that situation. All those are friends that they were with her. I think they were studying. All those are friends that they were with her. They were running out of Skeeter. But what, what were they doing during the day when she was in the secret room? If she, if she hasn't been feeling her soul with the right thing, she can't receive help from God. And she, she was helped to find, to find God. I'm just using examples that we know from people that we know. And even in the Bible, so like, let, let me just say what I've been discussing previously, like to receive help from God as another point. Why should feed your soul with the right thing to receive help from God? So Daniel, that we'll see when Daniel was doing the things, the thing of God, like he was praying, was even true, he was in prison because he was praying. He was thrown into the lion's den for praying. And God showed him out of the lion's for his sake. Because he was doing that in which, which is of God. He was feeding his soul. They can look around us. They can look around us, our leaders. Pastor David, you can see. He mentioned it even previously before we started. Um, tongues of fire. We have tongues of fire in the morning. Those work now for, for this um, GPS. This can't go by without feeding your soul with the right thing. You can't do it without, like, it stays up late. It says, like, um, if you check the messages of the Tongues of Fire notification, you check the times, like, four something. That's even before we start Tongues of Fire at all. That is sends message, like, 4 a.m. That means it's, like, a week since, like, three. And it still goes to work. It still has its own work that it's doing. So how does that go? This can't go without fasting and praying without keeping yourself oh. right in. Also, we can see, um, okay, um, he was, he can, if you can hear him, he was uh, reading the Bible the previous time. Yes, uh, yeah, like yeah. I can, I can use, I can use him as an example for someone who feeds his soul with his right hand. Um, sometimes he used to take me to church, he, like he, he, he's the first one I guess the church and is the last one that lives in church. He opens the church because if, even if, if, if he doesn't open it, we will just stay outside. All the church members will be stranded outside. And it's, he, he does that, he leaves the church. He, he gets to church early, leaves the church late, even if there's midweek service, and he still goes to his own work. And what does God do to help him? Gives him power to do everything, to accomplish it. So that's all. Those, those are all like our, our basic. Examples that we can see that are around us, you can look at everyone around us to see. You, you, we are, most of us are students here. You want to receive help from God, or like even even if you're studying, even if you're studying, you you you'll be able to do according to what you studied, or to receive help even when others are stranded, and you're feeding your soul with the right thing. You receive divine help from God, divine help. May the Lord help us. Amen. So, what should we feed our soul? And what are the ways to feed our soul with the right thing? Now, we mentioned it thing. Like, so what are those right things? What are those right? What is that right thing? Before I proceed, let's read Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Post, um, from, wait, I mentioned it. Right. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Colossians 3, 16 to 17. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. 17. And whosoever sorry, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. If I go into that, I am I don't let me miss a part that, that was yet. If um like what how do we know if what we're feeling our soul is wrong? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, 6. All these things are written for admonition. They are written for our example. If you see what's not right in your life that someone has even been calling your attention to or that you notice by yourself, that is like that you're feeding your soul with the wrong thing. Read the Bible. We, we can read it, we can read the scriptures. But that's just it. it says, all these things are written for admonition, for example. We don't have to go to seek advice from the wrong person that is not in your church. You can seek advice, don't put me wrong. Well, who do you, who do you go to to seek advice? If, or even, if you, even, even if it comes to like to seek advice, check the scriptures first. What does the scripture say about, about what's wrong with you? The examples in the, in the scriptures, all these things, they are written for admonition, they are written for examples. So, according to the Bible verse we read, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, um, they say, all, all, it, it basically says all what we should do there as Christians, like to, to keep our soul. Um, intact and to keep our soul enriched for God, for all what we might come to, all what we might face in the future. So, um, the first says, um, listening, listen to the word of God. Yeah. So that's my point. What should you feed your soul? What should you feed your soul? And what are the ways to feed your soul? The right thing. Firstly, listen to the word of God. You can listen to preachings. Christian podcasts, listen to preachers mm-hmm. like the previous preachings we had on GPS. If you miss the tongue fire, you can listen to it when you're at work or, or, or when you're just at your leisure time. Just listen to those preachings and and that's what you, you should feed your soul. That's what you should reminisce your soul. Life. That's what you, you should like keep putting in your soul, not mm-hmm. something in, in that time, in that layer time, instead of listening to some podcasts that we're talking about how um, LGBTQ people are misunderstood and everything. Don't mind me for like mentioning that a lot of times, but because that's what is striving in our society. That's the that's one of the major problems that is striving among the youth. Those transgender and everything but through the opposite. So listening to the word of God, listen to preachings, Christian podcasts, but let us also be careful not to be deceived. You know, the Christian podcast we listen to when you feed your soul with the right thing, you'll be able to descend from the spirits that which is right and which is wrong. As another thing. As another thing. We should, we should listen to the word of God. We should enrich ourselves with the word of God. Also read the Bible. You can use the um, read the Bible to a year plan and you can use you can use any other Bible plans that, that I say you can ask if you if you don't know the one you can use, you can ask from elders and and everything. Just like read the Bible. That's one question to read the Bible. Study the Bible. Get friends to study the Bible with during your leisure time or even by your own self. Go to Bible studies in your local church. Go to, like, go to Bible studies and listen, to, listen. Don't just listen. Put it to use also. Memorize scriptures. It sharpens your mind. Memorizing scriptures sharpens your mind, sharpens your soul, helps your soul. When God's word is reasked, when it's remembered and repeated often, it's like a stream of joy, peace, and strength that flows and carries your soul along with it. When the word of God is reasked, when, yeah, when it's reasked, when it's remembered and repeated often, it's like a stream of joy, peace, and strength that flows and carries your soul along with it. Meditate on God's word. Dig deep down in the things of the Bible. Don't just like when you when you read the Bible and something is not clear to you, dig deeper. Try to, that's what that's what that's what helps us as Christians as individuals. Dig deeper. Pray through the scriptures. When you study the Bible, the Holy Spirit helps you to make your own prayer points by yourself. You can pray with the scriptures. You, you there's nothing like you run you run out of prayer. Maybe all what you pray about is your study and everything. Even when you study the Bible, you can, you'll be able to you be able to get some. Just from it by yourself. Read God's word. After you study all these 
or, or, or an historic reward you were able to obey. God was it telling you pay attention to it. That's how you that's how you should that's what you should do your school. Listen to gospel, spiritual songs and hymns. That's what it says in the book of first we read. Um whatever you do doing in the name of the Lord, teaching and admonition one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. It's basically in the Bible. The Bible didn't say listen to secular songs. There's spiritual in songs. Keep good company. Keep good company. And even if, like, um, one day I asked, I asked a friend that, like, how does she balance her life, with her personal life, with her spiritual life, and everything? And because uh, now she's busy and everything. She said, just carry God along in whatever you're doing, all your activities. Just include God in everything you're doing. Even, even when, you're, when you're driving to work, or even when you're at work, instead of cursing on a driver that's, that's driving badly, that's affecting you. You can just you, you have your flashlight up and you can just listen to gospel music. You can just listen to things just reminiscing in your soul. That's what that's what we should be. Even, even if you're even if you are your your schedule is that tight, just include God in whatever you're doing, in everything you're doing. So um, um as I'm concluding, I want to give us some key points that we should pay attention to. Do not try to balance the vision of what you feed your soul. Do not, do not try to balance the vision of what you feed your soul. Not some things of the spirit and some things of the flesh. Like you're not balancing it, some of the spirit and some of the flesh. No. You should always let everything that you do to the spirit, let, let the spirit control you and not the flesh. For those that have been led by the spirit, they call, are called the sons of God. Those that are led by the spirit are called the sons of God. Not those that are, that are led by the flesh. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. What, what would a man gain if he loses his soul? Nothing is exchangeable for your soul. Nothing like basically is exchangeable for your soul. In the means of enjoying life, in the means of having fun, you may lose your soul. Rather than take charge of your own life, submit your will to God. Rather than, rather than take charge of your own life, submit your will to God. Peter 2 verse 25 let God be the overseer of your soul let God be the shepherd of your soul let let's let, let him let, let him lead your soul don't do anything out of your own will let God be the overseer of your soul don't just toy with your soul like that and let's 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 know that your soul is too precious to be fed with the wrong thing it's too precious and that what you proclaim with your mouth what they may be harmful to your soul so watch it. Watch what watch, watch what you proclaim to your life. Pay attention to the words of songs you listen to, and even your conversation, as we said earlier. Pay attention to everything you do. Lastly, as I close, let's read First John chapter two, verse fifteen and sixteen. First John chapter two, verse fifteen and sixteen. This is first John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. I'll read. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the, love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Do not love the world. Everything that is in the world is of is not of the Father. So I want us to ask ourselves the personal question. What do you direct your in doing? Does it bring glory to the name of God? Does it add any good or bad to your life? How does it affect your soul? Mm-hmm. That thing that you can't do without doing on a daily basis. Is it is it is it a good thing for your soul or a bad thing? Let us ask ourselves. I pray that after all what we have heard tonight, that we would not be hypocrites and it won't stand against us in the day of judgment in Jesus' name. Thank you. Wow. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. If you've been blessed, can you just respond, please? I just Hallelujah. I am Hallelujah. I am blessed. More nothing. Mm. I I I please you know if you can read the Bible, you can respond. I don't know what so 
you know, what a blessing. I am what blessed. Blessing. What a blessing. And I am nourished. Able, and to be able to mm. to be able to go even and make reference to previous GPS. That is just a blessing on its own. You see, this is the future. Israel came and Israel did what Israel, you know, God would give Israel grace to do. Oh, now, this is Peter. Peter, how old are you? Um, I'm 17. So, Peter is 17. Israel, 14. Are you 15 now, Israel? Not yet, sir. You know, this is, <laughs> you see, if you keep riding on this train, you will be way, way, way greater than some of us can ever do. We are not stopping yet. I'm not stopping yet. But I can assure you, you will be greater. You see, you know the true mark of raising men? They do better in your lifetime. Not when you are dead. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep, keep listening. Get your spirit alive. And, 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 and five years to come, you'll be amazed what God can do with you. Even before five years. So, wow, what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. You know, meaning that you pay attention on GPS, you pay attention in church, and you pay attention to, to people that you see. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Anybody has contri short contribution? I don't want long, and we just mute you. They will think that your microphone stopped working. So, your, um, you know, contribution. Let me see your hands if you have contributions or you have questions. 60 seconds. So, all right. Um, any other person? Yeah, start from a go. Any other person, you raise your hand also. Yeah, I want to thank God. I invited somebody from Cameroon. Um, he's on the line right now. And our time difference is about almost, what, five to six hours. I just want to say thank you to Pastor Abubakar for joining the line. That is a vessel that God is using mightily for Cameroon to bring young souls. He's a young man. He's about to be getting married this month. And God is using him mightily to win souls um, around our own ages just like Pastor David is doing. So I want to thank uh, our brother that God has used mightily because there are some things that we argue with our children um, concerning what they watch, um, the kind of music they listen to, but all they tell us is old school. Oh, you know what, uh, mommy, you know what, nothing happens, you know. But they will sleep and night when they have nightmares, they'll get up and run and come, oh, mommy, I can't sleep. I'm dreaming of this, I'm climbing mountains. But I just want to say that... Um, our brother, God bless you and continue to do the things you are doing. More anointing. Amen. Amen. Um, Bra Abubakar, you want to say something? Because I'm so... Oh, your hand is up already. That's great. Okay. All right. You can speak, sir. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, every, uh, Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, Mommy, for this invitation. Good I'm morning. so blessed. And I really want to bless God so much for that young man. I thank God so much for him. And I really want to tell him that he should fire on. The Lord is his strength. Mm -hmm. I will just be praying for him. I don't know him, but I will just be keeping him in my prayer. I was so much challenged. If at his age, I had known God, then by now I would have been very far with mm -hmm. So, so many things in life, but I really want to bless God so much. This is uh, 1 a.m. In, Camer in Cameroon. And when I got the invitation, I was to minister in a platform. So I just said, Mommy, can you send me this? And I thank God so much, Mommy, for inviting me. And I yeah. appreciate too much the grace in the house, the person leading this movement. And I pray that next time I will surely by the grace of God, be part of this. I'm so, super blessed. Amen. I'm super blessed. I'm super blessed. And it's a challenging 
uh, moment seen a young man in the, in the state at the age of 17. You can't see that in Africa. We are struggling so much to, 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 to get them, but they are so much distracted with so many things that I really see this is, a, this is something that I really need to invite some of our youth to be part of this, for them to see mm -hmm. those that are abroad and they can really talk about Jesus this much. We coming from the other side of the religion, we were not privileged to know Jesus this early, but I'm so happy and I pray that God blesses everybody Amen. on this platform and even those that will listen to the message after. I'm so super blessed. Thank you so much. God bless you all. No, don't Jesus. worry. Don't worry. We, we're going to we, we'll come and invade um, Cameroon. Don't worry. <laughs> It's too late for the devil to stop yeah. us. Amen. No, the devil, it's too late, late, late the for the devil to stop us. You see, yeah. we, we want to thank God for what God is doing. You know, mm -hmm. I started preaching when I was 18. By the time I was 22, 23, I started conducting revivals in Nigeria. So, you see, we can produce the same over and over. Amen. Like I said to these young people, if you keep it up, in the next five years, you will be doing way more than your anybody could think of. So, Bravo Baka, you keep it up. You know, there's light all over Africa. There's light all over Africa. There's light. Okay. And I got okay. so let me say this to you also. God is gonna empty some pulpits in Africa. All those people that are feeding poison to our young people, God is gonna empty those pulpits. Amen. Amen. So that Amen. The truth. So that the truth can, because there are so many lies and so many garbage out there that is more or less hindering the work that many people are trying to do with our young people. You That's see, true. You see, many of them, when you say one thing, they look at the so-called fathers and ministers all over, and, and they see that they are carried away by material things and not the calling mm. of God. So That's they see true. that there are so many professional, professional pastors more than called pastor. So many of them have turned into a profession, you know, but God has to release his power again. The glory has to be returned, returned back to the church. I told them this morning, if the church should continue like this, it will be difficult for Jesus to come back. That's it true. Be difficult because That's he's true. coming for a church without stain, without wrinkle, without blemish. And when yes. is that church going to be ready? The way, this, the, the way church is going now. But God will have to turn things around and he's doing it. And he's doing yeah. it. You know, so keep it up. And you know, you, you came from Islam and you see what God is doing with you. Don't worry. It's just it, it's just the starting point. We are going far, nothing will stop us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are so blessed Amen. to have you online. Thank um, you so much. You are blessed. Sister Elizabeth, I saw your hand. What happened to your hand? I put it down, but thank you. Pastor David, and thank you, um, Peter, for just the wonderful lesson. It was such a blessing. I think one thing that stood out to me that I wrote down that you quoted, it says, you can't expect God to be your source of peace when the world is your source of satisfaction. And I that stood out to me because a lot of times we pray for God, I need your peace. I need you to fill me with your peace. Yet we are like we're so distracted with so many things around us. So that's that's one thing that stood out to me. And thank you so much for being a blessing. And and and, and by the way, Peter just sent me a message that he wants to share a testimony, and I want him to say it before some of you go to your fellowship. So Peter, go ahead. Thank you, sir. So um I thank the Lord. I, um last week when I was supposed to um preach was when it was cancelled and exactly that day was a year that I came into this country. So I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank my dad. He's also here on this line today for for God for God using him to bring me to this country. And and it's been wonderful so far. It's been ups and downs but God has been faithful. I thank the Lord. I thank um my dad I thank my mom and my sister and I pray that all all of us will be together soon in Jesus' name. So, Amen. and also, um, I'll be going to college this year, and I still, I'm, I'm still like 
um, waiting for the college round that I that's my first choice. For the result, they have been, I've been, I've gotten accepted to other schools and scholarship. The program I mentioned I was doing, I got a full ride. Like it's almost much like a full ride. And I thank the Lord. I thank God for everything. So that's just what I want to share. Thank you. Listen, is a um is a big big testimony, and you see, and by the grace of God, we are trusting the Lord that all of us, by His mercy, will be here, you know, to make sure that when we send you to on, on campus, that you are not we are not sending you to drown, you know, because we've seen that that is happening a lot on campus. But like I've told you guys several times, my testimonies, you know, one of the advantage that we have is the Holy Spirit on campus. I've said it to you guys before, and I want many of you, I want you to take on that challenge. I said to you, there are not too many exams. I can't even remember too many that I did, that the Holy Spirit did not tell me what to read. That is one of the advantages of knowing Jesus early. That is one of the advantages of knowing Jesus early. You don't, what others stress for, you don't stress for it. And it will help you in your choice of marriage. Because I've told you, if you marry wrong, that's 50% of your destiny that's already wasted. You marry the wrong person, 50%, you can be sure of that. Because... <laughs> You know, you can't, you, you, you can never do, if you're married, you can't do ministry alone. You can, if you're married, you can't, okay, can you imagine, you want to, you want to give your children water, but the spouse, because he's an unbeliever, want to give them beer. So, what happened? <laughs> you know, so, they come, then the children become a shrine. You know, it's, it's terrible what is happening in the world, but we thank God because God is still preserving his own people. So we thank God for you. So, like I said, we are going to close it now. But before then, um, quickly, look on your screen. We still have, um, I want to thank God for all of those people that have registered. Like I said, you see, value is value. We have a brother all the way from, so, Bubakar, you're um you're a pastor, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So, so your name is Pray, also. <laughs> oh, yes. you just, uh, all right. Amen. You know. So we have a pastor right here, all the way from um, Cameroon, and we have people in America here that are probably watching um Scooby Doo, or listening to <laughs> Wole Agba, until you know. But, you know, it's value, 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 value. So by the grace of God, come May 27th, um, we're having a six hours program, breaking limitations, um, singles, married people, whatever it is, it's the relationship um, retreat. And we are trusting the Lord to do what he alone can do. Um, I can confidently, I, by the mercy of God, can confidently say, I know what it means to have a blessed marriage. And I don't owe the devil any, any apology for it. You know, and I thank God. So, it's a blessing. And I've seen what it means to have a terrible marriage. Painful. Painful. I've seen people in great places. I still spoke to one today. People in great places, in great places, they had very terrible marriage, very terrible. And, and it, it, the impact is still there. And they are trying to crawl out of that or of the damage that that uh, uh, has done to them. You will not have marital accidents in the name of Jesus Christ. None of you will have marital accidents. Amen. And so let's come, you know, you single, mostly for the singles, but guess what? <laughs> Prayer is never too much. We started attending sem marriage seminar. My, my, my wife and I, we happen to grow up under the same fellowship where what we are doing now is what they did to us then. So you have opportunity to drink from the same well of information. You have opportunity to be connected 
to the same source of information. So when you are growing together, you know, one person is not going north and the other person going south. We are going the same direction. That's one of the things that is missing today in the body of Christ. Not too many of our pastors can come out and say, this marriage, I use it to pray for you. And it's very difficult to give to someone which you don't have. It's very, very, very difficult to give to other people which you don't have. Because they can see it. I can tell you, oh, beloved, oh, beloved, oh. You can say, oh, and you're precious, oh, precious. If it is a lie, you will see it. <laughs> you will see it. And please don't tell me your marriage is sweet because you wear the same thing, you go around. If spiritually you are not flowing in the right, flowing as a couple in the right frequency, in the right light, you are not, your marriage is just, um, it's cosmetic. It's just a matter of time. Not that they will come and say they want to see your husband because your husband is home. This is not home. They can't see you because they know you carry nothing. Your husband is 90, operating on frequency 90. You are on the frequency minus two. Because your makeup bag is bigger than your prayer life. You know. It's a choice. <laughs> it's a choice. You know, when we say some of these things, some people get angry. You can get angry all you want to. But guess what? I pray. When you get to the future, when you look back, may you have a real, may you have a real certificate of marriage. A real one. Because that one is not the one they give in the court. The real certificate of marriage is the daily, daily, daily happenings in your marriage. That is your real certificate. You wait and see. See what will happen. When you cannot even celebrate your, your certificate of elect. So, because guess what? If you don't do it right, it will be difficult to showcase it. So, single retreat is coming. Please, we have the form. Go on the website. Somebody can type the website there. T A C N Y Ministries.org register. And now um, by the grace of God, also so that you can get your ticket cheap. Now, by the grace of God, we have been blessed and we are still getting blessings. So um come September 1st and 2nd, we'll be we're gonna be having our reawakening youth reawakening retreat in Houston, Texas, our West Coast Pacific area. I have to wake up. You have to wake up. People of God, you got to wake up. Many of you, you're learning what tomorrow looks like for yourself. I pray that you don't miss your training. Don't miss your, don't miss your own place. All of our brethren in that area, in Texas, or on West Coast, Dallas, and all of that, get ready. And some of us here, like I said to you guys, me and my wife, we get our ticket, or, we get our ticket already. <laughs> <laughs> because guess what? It is not a matter. This is not, this are direct information from the Lord. Go and do this. Go and do that. We're going to do our own part. We'll do our own part. Because guess what? At some point, some of you will have to carry on these things. But by that time, I want to make sure that I've done everything that God called me to do. And I pray that all of you too. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You know, I have too many stories. You know, if you preach the gospel for 30 years, you must have a lot of story. <laughs> yeah. But I pray for you that your story will be a sweet one. It will be a glorious one in the name of Jesus Christ. Very beautiful stories. So we have that coming um, come September 1st and 2nd. And like we said to us, by the grace of God, the hotel, our accommodation, our feeding will be free. It's free. All you need to do, bring yourself. Bring yourself. Um, <laughs> Bring yourself down there and then um, and come and experience what God is about to do. Amen. And um, well, if you see this our chat, it's on our website. Continue to look at it. There are so many things that the Lord told us or, you know, that we have not even been able to do <laughs> as youth and young adult ministry. You just look at the chat. Look at it. Look at it. We are still asking for leaders. But some, you know, I pray you not be uh, conference leader only every two, two years when we want to do conference that's when you're a leader or that's when you you know let's this thing have to be on on this is this we call it youth, youth and young adult ministries that's what it is let us wake up everybody let's wake up <laughs> let's wake up 
I will tell you my own. Let's wake up. When that time comes, I pray that it will be a good story for all of us in Jesus' name. And I want to say thank you to um, Mr. Isaiah. That is Peter's dad. And he came way, 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 way. In fact, it was it. It was a. He even came before Peter. He was the third person that joined the line. You know, what a blessing for a father to come and support the son and say, you know what? I'm going to be there. You know, it's a blessing. I pray for all of us in the name that is above our names, that as we grow and our kids, they age, they will know God, they will love God, they will serve God, they will fear God all the days of their lives. Their, their lives will continually bring us joy in the name of Jesus. And whatever Amen. God has given to us, we that we are in this position, to help as much as we can. We'll continue to do it to make sure that all of you, you have access to what you need for a bright future. And it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. So, um, Ed Aaron, anything before we call it a day? Anybody? Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, everything has been said. And just thank God for tonight's fellowship and um, also for uh, Brother Peter as well. It's a it's a blessing, even at age seventeen. Uh, what what you did tonight, you know, even there are some who are twice your age that you know can't even do half of it. So thank God for what He was able to use you for tonight, and it, truly, truly, what we're feeding our souls, you know, is very very important. Uh, we spend our time in the Word. We spend our time in prayer. And, uh, you know, what are our eyes looking at? What are we feeding into our lives directly or indirectly? So we thank God for the way God has used you tonight and also for everyone as, as well. You know, when the, when the GPS started uh, right after the conference, I think the numbers were much higher than this. But, you know, in life, <clears throat> in anything, um, you know, it's only the swift, only those who are uh, highly, highly dedicated that can carry it on uh, much further. Not everyone can can finish the race, um, you know, the way some can. So and some may have legitimate reasons and then some, you know, they just fell off because, you know, it's just just like a hot pan. It's hot when you turn the heat on and then once you turn it off you know, just goes back to being cold. So, uh, so thank God for everyone that has been on this journey uh, since the beginning of GPS. And so just want to just say, you know, God bless you for uh, your teaching tonight and the Lord will continue to strengthen you, give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you're going to need because truly, truly at this age, you know, there's, there's much more ahead for you and uh, we'll continue to pray for you and also uh, pray for all of our youth and young adults as well <clears throat> it's a blessing i mean we can have this many just coming from that i mean it's it's great because this is just our youth ministry itself i know our young adults too have been presenting but for our youth to be presenting at this capacity is is a blessing so we give god the glory for that tonight amen amen and if you're still challenged, you want to present, send me a text message. We, we still have slots where we can put you. Um, and the Lord be with us all in Jesus' name. If you look at the, um, the chart, you might be able to link it, you know, click the links and then go straight to register for any um to put yeah, register for any of those um programs that we have coming. And um, all is well in Jesus' name. So I'm going to call on one of our Dickens. One of our Dickens. Um, you see, I have. Um, I'm trusting God. The Lord is putting some things in my spirit. Um, all of those young people that are being ordained, all of that. You know, we just find time once in a while. We just pray together, so that <laughs> so that you not be swallowed. <laughs> um, you know, for every for every title, there's a battle. 
And for every battle, there's a mantle that can conquer it. You know, I pray that um, we'll not be wrongly, wrongly clothed for the battle. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, David said, I cannot walk in this. Because that garment on the day of battle was Saul's garment. So he said, no, I, I've not tried it. I can't. You know, you know, because when we look at, you know, then um, Acts chapter 6, you will see just to serve tables, just to serve food, you see the requirements. You'll be asking yourself, well, are they asking to be bishops? <laughs> they must be filled with the Holy Ghost. They may be good reputation. All you ask yourself, is it, are they asking to be bishops? No, just to serve food, to serve food. To tell you that kingdom business are very, very life, you know, life um, um matters. They are not um, they are not jokes. And we must do things differently. Seven deacons were ordained in Acts chapter six. Seven. We only heard of two of them, Stephen and Philip. Two of them. The other ones. In fact, theologians made us believe that the um Nick um the Nicholas that was there, it was the one that brought the wrong doctrine of the Nicolaitans in the book of Revelation. You know. So, who knows? Do you know that the, the first pastor of the Philippi church, the Philippians, that book of Philippians that you read, was that jailer that was saved in Acts 16. Acts 16. That jailer that was saved with this household was the first pastor of the Philippian church. So God can bring anybody from anywhere and turn them into a sign and wonder. And that's what God is doing with us. And will not fail in Jesus' name. So, Brother Joshua, for last Sunday, I want you to say the closing prayer and then we'll share the benediction. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. We thank God for such a wonderful time in His presence. And um, thank God for Everyone that has sacrificed this time you know, to come and eat up the word of God. You know, anytime that we sit at Jesus' feet, it's never it's never a waste. So um let's just <clears throat> bow our heads for Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for this time of devotion that was spent at your feet. Thank you, Father, for the life of my brother that you have used. Even at this very young age, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the release of this fresh grace, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have imparted upon him and this great desire, Lord God, for your kingdom, for your word, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have instilled in him. At this very age, Lord, we return all the glory for you to this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, the word says, Lord God, that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, Lord Jesus yes. Christ. For everyone that has gathered before you tonight, Lord, that is hungry for you, Jesus Christ, that is truly hungry, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that this night, Lord God, they shall have a, a fresh infilling in their soul, in their spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that even as we go about our nights, Lord Jesus, even as we go about our week, our month, Lord God, Father, I pray, Lord God, that something new, Lord Jesus Christ, oh Lord, will begin in the lives of every single one here tonight in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I'd like to commit the singles and marriage retreat unto you, Lord, the seminar that is coming on. Oh Lord, Father, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that those who are trusting you, Lord Jesus Christ, for, for a partner, a partner that, 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 that they can go, go on in this life, Lord God, to fulfill destiny to fulfill the work of the kingdom that you have entrusted, that you have into their hands, even before the creation of this world, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will open everyone's eyes, Lord God, and you will bless every single person, Lord God, with that person that they are searching for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord God, if anyone may have made a mistake in marriage, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I trust that this seminar, this retreat, Lord Jesus Christ, this singles retreat, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, if anyone that is married that is coming to this retreat, Father, I pray, Lord God, that there will be a, a, a redirection, there will be a transformation Amen. in any marriage that is not Amen. perfect, Lord God. But you will do a new thing in everyone's Amen. life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we know, Lord God, your glorious plan for us for, to, to, to be married. We know how it is good, Lord God. And it is for the, 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 the work of the kingdom, Lord God. 
we know that marriage between husband and wife is supposed to be a perfect reflection of the, the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church, Lord God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that anyone's marriage that is even here this hour, Lord God, that is being attacked by the devil using this, this, this as a point of contact, Lord God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will just intervene in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Because an attack against the marriage of the church is an attack against the work that God has ordained for the end time church. It's, a, it's an attack against what the Lord has, has, has planned, Lord God, has destined, Lord God, for individual's life, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that the mercy of God will yes. speak over on behalf of every married person here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for those who are single that are looking forward to attending this event, Father, be on or before that day, I pray that you preserve their lives in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. If anyone is in courtship or that is currently dating right now, but they are dating out of your will, they are in courtship out of your will, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you also intervene on that Amen. behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you continue to keep your church in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for how you have helped us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as we get ready for also for the retreats that are coming up later on the year in, in Houston, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you continue to keep us till then and after in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, even as you visited us last, last July, Lord God, I pray that you will visit us in, in, a, in a fresher dimension, Lord God, at Amen. these two events in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for, for the life of our Father in the Lord. Lord God, thank you for the Pastor David, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that you continue to refresh him afresh. You continue Amen. to release fresh grace over his life and all the leadership of the youth ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For the life of our of our brother that has visited even from Cameroon this time of the night. Lord God, as he has honored you with this sacrifice, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord God, for a special Amen. visitation, Lord God, Amen. upon his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done, Amen. Lord God. For everyone that, 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 that are here right now, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, everyone, Lord, has one thing that they are looking up to you for, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Daddy, I pray, Lord God, that you will visit your children specially this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray that all this time that we have set out, Lord God, to sit at your feet, it will not be a waste in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. How, how awful will it be, Lord God, for individuals to sacrifice time, Lord God, at, at your feet, but then they go out of this meeting and they act, they, they, they do things contrary to what they have been taught, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that these things that we are learning from you, Lord God, we will not act contrary against Amen. it in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. But because we know that the blessing is in the application of the word, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for fresh grace to apply Amen. the things that yes. you have taught us yes. here tonight yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done, Lord Thank God. You, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In our generation, Jesus Christ, I pray that we will stand out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will not fit in with the rest of the world in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we will go on to truly be that light, Lord God, that you have called us to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for helping Thank every you. one of us here tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You know, before I share the benediction... I, this song came to my spirit. We sang this song many years ago, decades. But we never knew that God was listening. Today, I can confidently say, thank you, Jesus, for listening. Oh, my Tigong. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Oh, my God. 
to your ears, O oh God. Lord Jesus. Let our generation praise you. Amen. Let our Amen. generation bless your name. Amen. Amen. There is no backsliding in our future. Amen. Lord. There's no looking back in our tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We stand and we stand strong in you, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Amen. We stand and we stand tall in you, O oh God. Yes, yes, Lord. We stand and we stand fruitful in you. Oh yes, God. Lord Jesus. We take root below and we bear fruit above, O oh God. Amen. And our fruits, they are lasting fruits in Christ. Amen. Our Amen. fruits shall not see decay. Amen. Amen. Our fruit shall know no decadence. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Peter, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord that has opposed us for years, that same God will oppose you. Amen. You will not know sorrow. Amen. You will not know decadence. Amen. Every single one of you, as you pant for God, as you yearn for him, the Lord will continue to satisfy the longings of your heart. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The love of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 With us now and forevermore. God bless you. Um, this program is recorded live. So,